Hello, welcome to CloudBerry Lab webinar about CloudBerry Managed Backup Service. My name is Julia and I'm part of CloudBerry sales team. So today we're going to be talking about our special product for managed service providers and it's called CloudBerry Managed Backup Service. CloudBerry Managed Backup Service is an ideal product for managed service providers of small and medium size. Why? Because it enables you to serve your customers without any physical storage with your own self-managed cloud storage account. By the way, now we support not only Amazon Web Services storage, but we also support Azure and Dream Objects. Also, it enables you to provide white label service and you can benefit from our extensive remote management and monitoring features. So, how it works? The request is sent from the end user's computer to get authentication and authorization from CloudBerry Lab server and once it is granted, the backup goes directly, um, the files go directly to Amazon S3, Amazon Glacier or to other storages that we support now, Azure and Dream Objects. So now let's go to our management console and we'll start creating a user. That's the first step. So basically we go to Users tab and we click on Create User. Here you'll need to insert several details like first and last name and email. And then you can change your password. Let's make it simple, one, two, three, and then you insert a company name. Also, you can change your region and the bucket here, and I'll just use US standard. You can change the package that you want to use. I have just one package, so I'll just leave it. Also, you uh, can check these boxes to make sure that your user is active and to make sure that your user will get an email once you click Save button. Also, you can choose, choose the licenses for this particular user to use. We have SQL, Exchange licenses, SQL, SQL Plus Exchange, and normal server and desktop licenses, but we'll go through the licenses later. Um, so, once you click Save, your user will uh, get this type of email. This email will have um, the link to download backup agent and uh, I already have it downloaded so it's just here. So um, then the, your user clicks on download and once it's ready he or she will need these login details. So uh, once the backup down is downloaded your end user will have um, this box up now and they will need to insert those details that they just received on their email. So then they just click OK and now we're ready to run a backup. There are two ways um, how you can set a backup plan. You can set it up directly from the backup plan agent or you can um, set it up in our management console. So first of all we'll run backup from backup plan agent. So we go to welcome tab and you can click this one or this pattern backup files and that's how you create backup plan. So here uh, first on, on the first step we choose our storage. We can either backup locally to file system or we can backup to our storage account. Now we choose the, uh, the name for our backup plan and uh, let's call it webinar backup. Now we, we can save this backup plan for future, so we, can, we click Next. Here we have block level backup options, so you can choose to block level your backup and also you can choose to use volume shadow copy service. You would need this if you are planning to backup files that can be potentially accessed by third party while the backup is in progress. So I'll choose those two and then we move on. Now I can actually choose the file that I want to backup and um, I'll choose one of the pictures. Okay, I'll choose to back up Koala picture and then we click Next. Here we have advanced filters. So you can back up certain files uh, in selected folders or you can skip 
those type of files. Also, you can choose to backup empty folders and uh, you can backup files modified since particular date and time. Also, you can choose to not backup files larger than certain size. I chose not to backup system, system and hidden files. Then I click Next and here we have compression and encryption options. To compress you just click this button um, and to encrypt you can choose one of those encryption algorithms of which we have available here. This one is a default one and the important thing to rem remember is that whoever encrypts uh, the files have to remember the password because CloudBerry Lab doesn't have access to this information for security purposes. Also, we support reduced redundancy storage, uh, which Amazon Web Services offers. Then we move on. On the next one, we have purge options. So you can either use defaults, which are here, or you can specify your own and you can change the defaults. You can change the file version age and you can change the number of versions for each file that you wish to keep. Also, you can choose to delete files that have been deleted locally after a certain number of days. We click Next. Here we have scheduling options and there are different uh, options that we have. We can either back up um, manually, we can back up on a specific date or we can set up recurrent schedule which is the most popular option. So we can back up say daily at um, 6 p.m. Uh, and we can actually make it occur in every couple of hours if we like. So then we click, um, actually also you can do day of the month, weekly and monthly backup. So I'll just leave it daily for 6 p.m. and we click OK and then you can check this box if you want to run missed scheduled backups when the computer starts up. So next and here we have full backup schedule options so this is pretty straightforward then we click next here we're taken to pre and post actions tab you can execute certain actions before the backup starts and after it completes next here we have notification options you can receive notifications every time or just in the events of failure. Also, you can generate detailed report. Next. Here we have summary of our backup plan. If we are happy with it, we click next. If not, we can go back to any step and change it. So, if we check this box, the backup will start running automatically. Then we click finish and now we have our backup running. That's how it looks like and from this backup plan tab, you can edit this particular backup plan or any other ones and you can delete this backup plan, you can restore files from here, you can view history of this backup and um, you can force full backup and clone this particular plan. Uh, while it's uh, backing up the file, I can tell you that you can also restore files directly from this tab and you can restore files from um, our backup storage or you can create a restore plan which is uh, similar to what we just did with the backup plan. So, okay, our backup just ran successfully and um, you can see it here and say if we go to backup storage, we can see our backup here. Let me just find it. Okay, that's the backup that we just run and it's a full backup. Uh, when we run the next one, because we checked the block level backup box, it will be a um, block backup. So now we can go to our management console and um, under the users tab we can see what's happening with this particular user. So we can click on monitoring tab and here we can see um, the storage that this um, customer uses, the backup uh, plan name, like that's the backup that we just run. You can see uh, the schedule for the backups and you can remove the backups directly from here. So also you can edit the user 
it will take us to create user tab, like to similar to create users tab, and uh, we can change any details for the user. Also, you can drop the user. You can either drop the user completely, or you can just remove his um, back, backup data from your storage. So we are not going to do it yet. Uh, then we can go to monitoring tab, and we can see the two users that I have, their backup plans, and that's again, that's the backup that we just run, and we see the same information that we just saw for that particular user. Um, now let's go to remote management tab, which is a fairly new feature, and it's a very exciting feature because it enables you to do very many things for, for your end users. So here we can see the backup plans that this user has, and um, you can force start the backup, you can edit the backup plan directly from here, and you can also remove the backup plan. So what else um, remote management enables you to do? It enables you to create a backup plan directly from here without, um, um, without the end user being involved. But for this, you would need to know the backup source, and you would need to include the path of, for, for, to the file that you wish to backup. But otherwise, um, this interface is similar to the one that, that we just had in the backup plan agent. It's a, a slightly different um, configuration, but it's exactly the same features. So now let's go to Notifications tab. Here, as a managed service provider, you can choose to receive um, the report yourself, or you can also enable uh, your end users to receive notification emails in the event of failure or always. And also, you can create a um, group report if you check this box and if you click Save. I'll show you how group report would look like. That's how it looks like. You have a company user's computer's names. And you have backup plan name, a product version, and the storage space used. Also, you have a schedule for your backups and duration of each backup. You have overdue backups and the status of success or failure. And now we go back to our panel. Also, it's important thing to note that I, I just missed that you can send log directly from your management console for for the failed backups. So here here it is. Send logs to support. And our support um, responds to you within 24 hours by email. So also we have um, quite a handy feature which is ROI, ROI calculator where you can estimate how much charges you're going to incur and what to charge your customers. So uh, let me now tell you about our rebranding feature, which is one of the most exciting features of uh, the managed backup service. You can qual you will qualify for advanced rebranding if you purchase 20 or more licenses, or you can just uh, request a custom rebranding where you can change the product name like I did. So um, my backup plan was a, um, a simple rebranded version of our backup. Um, to to do the advanced rebranding, you would need to download specifications and sample graphics, and you would need to create your own based on this ones. Then you would need to email them to contact at cloudbeerlab.com, and then our technicians will liaise with you, and they will create um, the custom product for you. Let me show you the differences between the two versions. So this is just custom rebranding and uh, we have custom product name here. But we have a Cloudberry kind of theme here and there and everywhere and we have reference to Cloudberry here. But we have um, again this custom name. Then if we go to about tab, we'll see a custom name, but we see Cloudberry Lab website link and uh, uh, 
the link to end users license agreement, which is the Cloudberry one as well. If we go to advanced rebranding agent, that's how it will look like. So this is uh, the login tab and it's already tailored for this uh, company brand and it's a different product name, different icons and banners throughout the product. Um, if we go to create backup plan wizard, you have Acme everywhere and you have no reference to Cloudberry. Same happens in our About tab. It's also Acme and it's uh, their website and it's their end user license agreement. So yeah, that's our rebranding. Now let me tell you a little bit about our prices. So we have uh, this pricing model where you can get um, different packs of licenses and uh, the more you get, the less expensive one license is. We also have SQL and exchange licenses and we have a combination of exchange and SQL. Sometimes I get questions from customers if they need to buy desktop and server license and SQL license if they want to back up SQL. No, you don't. You just need to get one SQL license if you want to back up SQL database. So, well, this is pretty much it. I told you about the pricing and about the product features and now you can just write me your questions and I will try to answer them. If I don't know how to answer them because they're too technical or something, then I'll get back to you by email. So I look forward to getting your questions.